So we're here today with Alexander Nevsky, and we're going to talk about a lot of different things, but I wanted to say that uh, congratulations Thank you. on Maximum Impact. Uh, where can our viewers find your movie? It depends where your viewers are, but thank you very much for inviting me. It's a great pleasure to be here. It's a great pleasure to speak English for the Kazakhstan audience because I was in Kazakhstan twice with my previous films and uh, both times I spoke Russian. So now it's in English. Uh, Maximum Impact was released in Russia uh, last year. It was released in the United States and worldwide this year. Mm -hmm. So it was released by Sony over here. So it was in limited theatrical release already and now it's on uh, That's really Blu-ray. awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. I mean, it, 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 it was a nice ride, uh, Maximum Impact. And uh, this is uh, American version. It's uh, on Blu-ray and DVD. Uh, it's also on iTunes. It's also on uh, whatever, all the digital platforms and VOD right now. And we're talking to Netflix uh, because you can find my directorial debut, Black Rose, on Netflix. Mm -hmm. And hopefully Maximum Impact will be on Netflix soon too. Uh, but in Russia and in Kazakhstan, my films are always theatrical releases, and it's very important for me. But uh, it was this one nice. went to theaters in Kazakhstan as well. Uh, I think so. I think Luxor released it everywhere. That's uh, wonderful. Last year. Yeah. That's really. But cool. me personally, I was in Kazakhstan with Black Rose. Mm -hmm. With Black Rose, I was in Astana, and mm -hmm. I love it. I just loved it. And uh, with the showdown in Manila, I was in Almaty. How to say right? Almata or Almaty? Almaty. Almaty. Yeah. See, uh, I still remember that. And I met with a lot of uh, people over there. I did a lot of interviews. I mean, uh, uh, great, great uh, country. And, you know, I, I was born in Moscow many years ago, and it was still Soviet Union. So I still consider people from Shh, Kazakhstan. Nobody will guess. Uh, exactly, exactly, <laughs> because of my language. I know my accent and everything. But uh, I consider people from Kazakhstan, from Georgia, from uh, Chechnya, from uh, even from... Uh, uh, Baltic republics. I consider them all, them all brothers because I'm from Soviet yeah. Union. And I think that's a great thing which we had mm -hmm. in Soviet Union. Probably we had some bad things, whatever, but that was a great thing because in schools they mm -hmm. told us that we're all brothers. Mm -hmm. And hopefully now they try to reconnect again, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, hopefully. Well, there yeah. were like, in, I think in different republics there were different. Uh, perceptions of that uh, brotherhood because I do remember a little bit of a different story from the 80s um, at school like yeah the, 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 the wars because you know we had that the 1986 we had like a big protest going on with Gorbachev and that was like so they were like of course, pages of history that were not that pleasant. However, I absolutely 100% agree with you. We do have that history in common. We really do kind of like, you know, um, understand. we have a similar mentality, correct? Mm -hmm. And we understand each other and it's um, it's really wonderful. And I'm so, so glad you're here. And Thank I'm you so much. happy to sit down and um, talk about your, your movies, talk about your experience. I want to definitely discuss, you know, the, 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 all these breakthrough you did was as far as like the bodybuilding and acting and your incredible education, seriously, people dream about that and they should be inspired by people like you. Uh, thank you very much. And actually it's, it's nice to hear it from you because you achieved a lot in your life <laughs> and uh, we just spoke before the show and also I know you and, um, uh, thank you for coming to the Showdown Manila premiere. You know, have a lot of mutual I loved friends. It. Yeah. Thank you very much. I just think that uh, you always have to have a dream mm -hmm. because uh, really it doesn't matter how much money do you have in the beginning or how how much of the connections mm -hmm. or whatever. You have to have a dream and you have to believe in yourself because I was a very skinny kid when I started and I didn't do any sports at all. And again, it was Soviet Union. Mm -hmm. And in Soviet Union, bodybuilding uh, as well as martial arts it was illegal bodybuilding was, was illegal. It? it was we couldn't even name it bodybuilding uh because of arnold and stallone they killed so many russians and their movies in 80s it was a reason for soviet government wow. just to ban it we couldn't yeah. even name it bodybuilding we named it like athletic gymnastics or something like that and it was just we had just two official gyms in mm -hmm. moscow in 80s two and it wasn't uh, 
Yeah. Like uh, you could name them bodybuilding gyms. In the entire was, city. Entire city. Like yeah. weightlifting. It was weightlifting gyms. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, later everything changed. But when I started to train in 1986, mm-hmm. I mean, uh, you couldn't buy dumbbells in a store. I mean, you couldn't. Uh, so it was an interesting journey when I watched uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. So how Schwarzenegger. did you do that? Hold on. You didn't have dumbbells. You only had two gyms in the city. You were in an amazing shape. I mean, first of all, quick question. When you were skinny kid and when did you become like the big kid? In 1986 when I started bodybuilding. Uh, I was actually I, I was actually a really tall kid already because mm-hmm. I was almost uh, in centimeters like 1 meter 90 centimeters like 6 six four probably yeah, already yeah. because my father my father is a very tall guy i was trying basketball uh but i was very skinny and my weight was probably like 120 pounds or something like that oh my goodness yeah. because when uh, i started with boxing yeah. i started with boxing and i was really in like really lightweight category with that height right and my biceps is my biceps is were like 10 inches you know like, <laughs> yeah. i mean it was like that I'll send you some photos so you can show it to your yeah. audience when, when I look uh, like that. And first I started boxing and uh, I started to train. I mean, I started to do push-ups and I started to do some other things. And uh, I lied to you because I had two dumbbells. Uh, one was like four kilos, old ones. I think it fr- was from my grandfather, like complete iron dumbbells. Yeah, yeah. Like, I think I remember exactly. the look pro- of it. Yeah, from my brothers. Like yes. that, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. one was four kilos and one was six kilos. Uh-huh. So first I was trying to do four kilos. It was like the that. dark iron, right? Of course. Like yeah. real, yeah. real yeah. cold <laughs> iron. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, uh, and later I joined the gym and I joined the boxing gym uh-huh. uh, at the University of Moscow, State University of Management. Uh, and I still was a kid in school, but mm-hmm. my father was a professor over there. And that's the only good thing he did for me. He just uh, pushed them and I was uh, I was in school, but they made an exception and they took me uh, in a boxing class. So I was now uh, like with big guys trying to do boxing and uh, they had like real dumbbells over there for boxing. They mm-hmm. weren't bodybuilders. They just did like a little bit with dumbbells, mm-hmm. with barbells, whatever. And I just fall in love with bodybuilding and with boxing first and with bodybuilding after that. And like uh, five years later, five five years later, country changed completely, and uh, I changed completely with the country. And by 1993, actually 25 years ago, in December of 1993, the documentary film about me was shown on Russian TV before the news, like before like 8 p.m. news. And it it made me uh, start overnight okay. over there in Let, 1993, okay, 25 well, years ago. Okay, so 1993 documentary about your bodybuilding. It it called Target Universe. Right. Uh, so how did they me, find you? Uh, uh, by that time, I already graduated from uh, Moscow State University. I was already established boxer, and uh, I was already like not 300 pounds, but probably like 280 pounds. I was like the biggest guy in Moscow. Uh, already plus I can talk and I had right. a great story I was skinny kid from yeah. intelligent family mm-hmm. uh, who started with boxing who right. still did education uh, I started to write how they found me I started to write articles uh, for magazines and uh, uh, first they invited me to the uh, that's funny uh, to the kids TV show Tam Tam News Tam Tam mm-hmm. Novosti the guy who was a host Karchevnikov he's kind of like uh, uh, number one uh, TV host right now in Russia he, and he was a kid when he interviewed me in my TV shows over there in my TV appearances so they invited me to that kids show and I just spoke about bodybuilding I spoke about believing in myself and uh, uh, how important it is and it was a different time because in the 90s in Russia I mean uh, it was kind of fashionable to become a gangster uh, or... I do remember those times because Kazakhstan was actually very similar to that Unfortunately, yeah. So from my very first interviews, I spoke about that, and uh, uh, I said that if I achieved it through bodybuilding, if I changed my life, if I got an education, mm-hmm. everyone could do it too. And uh, people from uh, uh, Russian TV, I mean, the producers of Russian TV channel, they saw it, and it called now it's Russia Channel. Before it was like RTV Channel. So it was second channel of mm-hmm. the, uh, Russian TV. I mean, they made 25 uh, minutes documentary. They showed it. 
I think it was December 20th of 1993, before Vesti, before evening news. Mm -hmm. Next day, I woke up. I mean, uh, everyone knew me. Because, okay, so I, because I, I, sorry, yeah. I interrupt you. Uh -huh. At the time, we had just three TV channels. It was Channel One, <laughs> Russia Channel, right, and something else. It yeah. was before MTV or whatever. So, you kept so everyone <laughs> watched it, right? And the next day, it was different. Yeah. Okay, so I want to talk about this little very important thing for our audience is how did you create an opportunity for yourself to be discovered and that was actually like 1993 uh wild wild west of russia right those were yeah. like the hard times right after the fall of soviet union it wasn't exactly like flourishing you know land of opportunities for people you know meaning it was difficult it was a very difficult time for everyone in that region after the fall of the Soviet Union. The economies were suffering, so on and so forth. But because you have written those articles, you found a way to be discovered, and that is very, very important. I also had a story. I also exactly. had big muscles. Of I, course. I also yes. knew how to talk. I also, yeah. So I had that puzzle which I created myself. Exactly. And, uh, I mean, of course, for, uh, for all your audience, they have to understand that, uh, yes, you have to create opportunities for yourself. But also, uh, if you want to make it, you have to be strong. You have to be smart. You have to be well-educated. Mm -hmm. And you have to do it all yourself. Mm -hmm. You cannot wait. For anyone to give you the chance and uh, also you shouldn't let no sayers uh, to break your dream because uh, actually when i was skinny and tall everyone around me told me you know what you are skinny and tall so you're so tall you just cannot gain weight you just cannot but gain you didn't muscles take no for an answer of course not uh, yeah. because i knew there is a one bodybuilder not arnold i mean arnold always was my idol and of course for like for millions of people but there was another one ralph muller Mm -hmm. who was Mr. Universe and world champion, who was two meters, like 6'6". Six, six. Wow. He was already in Gladiator, not, it wasn't Gladiator, but he wasn't best of the best. He was an universal soldier. Later he did Conan TV show. Later he did Gladiator. Mm -hmm. Ralph Muller, I mean, great guy. Now he's like, uh, I mean, like my uh, older brother, Ralph. He's one of my closest friends, but it was much, much later. At the time, I just knew if Ralph, like huge guy, could make it and could gain all that weight and he's tall, Mm -hmm. I can do it too. So, of course, later, when I got all these muscles, they told me, you know what? You just cannot do two things at once. You cannot continue to train your muscles and be in university. You just cannot. And, of course, I did that. I mean, I graduated from Moscow State University. I also later had my PhD in economics over there. Uh, but also, uh, I continued to train muscles. So, in 1993, right before they shot the documentary, they told me, you know what? Look around. Did you see bodybuilders on Russian TV? Never, right? I mean, who will put a bodybuilder on Russian TV? Right. It will never happen. And uh, as I told you in December of 1993, when they put it on TV, like next week, because it was before emails, before whatever, they got like, they showed me seven huge boxes of letters. It was like thousands of letters. And that was the reason for Russian TV. They gave me my own TV show, kind of like a weekly small show when I started to promote bodybuilding mm -hmm. and exercises mm -hmm. and all of that. Uh, and that's how I how I started it all over there. Many years ago, when I just got here, it was exactly the same thing. Russian, it's impossible. I mean, to be in movies, not to playing bad Tell Russians. Tell me about it. Exactly. Produce. Oh, you have I an mean, accent. Forget about that. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. But uh, I just told you, and you, you're another example mm -hmm. of that, but I just told you about my life. And I just, uh, so, so many times, I heard the word impossible. Yeah. I mean, it's just that I love it. Yeah. I just love yeah. it. There's no such thing as impossible. Exactly. So the, um, so the lifestyle you had then, meaning like the, the type of food you ate, uh, the routine, your workout routine, do you still keep the same thing or has it like changed? What is it now? You know, the great thing mm -hmm. about uh, bodybuilding and about my life in particular I mean, I'm doing the same thing. As soon as I fall in love with bodybuilding, as soon as I fall in love and had all the dreams about being a movie star one day and just be independent and be with big muscles. I mean, 25 years later, look at me. I don't look like I'm 47. Of course not. This I is why look... I was joking at the exactly. beginning. I was I mean, saying it's... like, who, who the hell will say that you actually went to school in 80s? But the yeah. funny thing is, I trained with Governor Schwarzenegger two weeks ago. Two no weeks way. ago, and Arnold 
Arnold, uh, I cannot say he's my close friend, but he's a great friend. And Arnold actually was the first one who watched Maximum Impact. We organized screening for him what was, and for Ralph. What did he say? He loved it. He yeah, just loved nice. it. And he yeah. worked with director. Andrzej Barkowiak worked with Arnold and Twins. Mm -hmm. uh, he was the director of photography on Twins. I love that movie, by the way. Great movie. It's classic, yeah. Great movie. But Arnold, he's 71 years old. I trained with him at Gold's two weeks ago. I mean, he's in great shape. He just finished Terminator. I mean, uh, he's just he's just amazing. So him and Ralph, as much as they inspired me, and Sly Stallone, as much as they inspired me when I was a kid, they still inspired me because they still live in the dream. And that's exactly what you asked me. Yes, this morning, you, you, you just saw it. I mean, right before uh, our, our show, I just ate protein bar. Yeah, I had yeah. like huge omelet for breakfast in the morning in one of my favorite places in Beverly Hills. As soon as we're done, I mean, I have to go actually to meet our mutual friend Zoya at the Hollywood Foreign Press. There is another thing because, you know, I represent Russia at the Golden Globes. Which is which was a huge thing for us journalists. I mean, it's just so this me is, this voting a, for the Golden Globe. It's, yeah. it's a different story. But in the evening, I'll go and train my muscles in the exact same way I trained them 25 years ago, 30 years ago. I'm doing my favorite exercises. And then it's just, that's a great thing about physical culture. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, in my case, um, I can't compare. Because like first 15 years of my life, I didn't do sport at all, as I told you. And it, 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 it wasn't much fun. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Last 30 years of my life, I mean, it's just the most recent 30 years of my life. I do it every day, almost every day. If I uh, don't want to uh, lift weights today, I'll go and swim There's in the Beverly Hilton. Yeah. Exactly. They have a great swimming pool. I'll go and swim or I'll run or I'll go to the ocean and just walk like for one hour. And in my case, it worked. And I'm sure that uh, for all your audience, uh, we don't... Uh, expect everyone to become Mr. Universe or whatever, but it's, uh, it will really make you stronger. It will make you stronger. Make you, you should do it. Make you a better version of yourself. Look at you. I mean, you look amazing. I well, mean, thank you. Uh, thank you. I actually am trained in kickboxing for the past. So you're dangerous. <laughs> so you're dangerous. I know. No, 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 no. I don't, I don't spar. I don't spar. But uh, I do um, train with an amazing trainer, Tim Storms. I don't know. You might. He's actually also a stuntman. He's done a lot of movies. Um, a trained actor, so on and so forth. But I have been doing that since 2004. That's another thing we have in common because yeah. uh, when I did boxing, uh, at the time, as I said, martial arts and kickboxing, even mm -hmm. it was illegal in Russia. It became legal, I think, in 91, mm -hmm. 92, and they organized like a first Russian kickboxing league, Kitek. Mm -hmm. And it was organized by ex boxers mostly mm -hmm. who mm -hmm. started to learn and mm -hmm. and my trainer Vadim Lotoshenko he was one of the organizers of uh, Kitek league mm -hmm. and I did kickboxing for a while and he was upset for a long time that I didn't take that sport seriously because yeah. he always thought we could do a lot of things like but that. But that's what what you're passionate about, isn't it? Like if if you if that works for you, then that's what you go exactly. with. Exactly. Yeah. And actually, uh, through Key Tech, I met Don the Dragon Wilson first time mm -hmm. and Chuck Norris first time because uh, they went to Russia to do seminars for the uh, Key Tech League. Mm -hmm. And I, I was a kid. I mean, 20 years old. But I look at them, and I mean, Dragon Wilson, long before we made all that movies together and everything. I mean, he was amazing as a kickboxer. He was amazing. I remember the movies. Like remember those classic movies where with him and. Um, Iron Fist. Yes. No, 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 not Iron. Blood Fist. Blood, Blood Fist. Fist. There Blood you go. Fist. Yeah, exactly. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Blood yeah. Fist. I mean, he's an amazing guy. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's another story because in the 90s, I'm sure you're the same way. We started to watch all that movies and pirated videos, uh, unfortunately, because they never released them. Remember, was like a horrible translation in the background, was like someone speaking like this. Sometimes horrible, <laughs> sometimes it was even more entertaining. It was all pirated. Uh, someone was like, yeah. Nah, nah, nah. Some, yeah. Some guy had like voice <laughs> yeah, like yeah. that, like famous guy. Yes, but great thing is, pirates, they didn't really filter that movie. So they put, for example, Arnold film and Matthias Hughes film on the same uh, video yeah, because yeah. like two movies they put mm -hmm. like one damn big budget film mm -hmm. and on the dragon wilson low budget film on the same yeah, day yeah, yeah. and we watch it and i mean for us it was like the same level of idols and uh, to me it's uh, the same to that day because uh, i think these guys uh, 
they inspired so i mean they inspired a lot of people all, all over the world but in soviet union in particular i mean you are absolutely correct yeah so sure. many people yeah, went to sure. the gyms to the kickboxing yeah. to the martial arts to the bodybuilding because of them yeah and it's it's, it's a great achievement for yeah, them yeah for sure and there's something super romantic about it too i think for for all of us you know a romantic yes so how did you get into movies movie actually like let me make it more particular how did you get into filmmaking so as soon as they become famous in russia right like by the middle of 90s i was already like a household name in russia so i was in all the tv shows like mm -hmm. uh tema tv show like mm -hmm. evening news i was everywhere because i did the same thing arnold did in 70s and 80s in the states because kind of i was like a first official bodybuilder yeah. and i could talk and i looked like that yeah. and i was smiling and yeah. I, i could joke and i had a yeah. nice story everything was great so i wrote my first book in 1996 it called how to become schwarzenegger in russia mm -hmm. and they sold about hundred thousand copies which was huge number for the time because people didn't read at the time much unfortunately in the middle of 90s and i wrote my second book with my kickboxing trainer which called kickboxer and had van damme from kickboxer movie on a cover we stole it from uh, his movie <laughs> and it was funny because five years later i gave it to him as a gift and that, that was him who said like did you pay for the rights of that photo i said no <laughs> he was laughing and uh, after that i wrote another book which called fitness for kids yeah uh, and uh, i did that things but the only thing which was missing was next step and film business and in 90s as you remember probably in kazakhstan it was the same because of all the crisis because of the collapse of the soviet union actually all the huge film business we had in a soviet union collapsed together mm -hmm. with the country so there were no more movies and i remember on mass film i went to mass film half of it was closed completely another half was doing some like uh, special effects for tv or whatever something like that one of my friends sergey bajanov he was doing something it was not uh, he, he was making movies he was doing some tv shows or some special effects for tv and everything but uh i met Ildar Rizanov over there <gasps> I met Eldar Izanov and oh, it was wow. so great because uh, when he saw me, he told me, Sasha, he told me, I know you. And I mean, Eldar Izanov, he's my, I mean, uh, his films, I know them, especially one, uh, you know, I'm talking about, I mean, uh, this is... Okay, so for the audience who doesn't know who Eldar Izanov is, he's a classic director, filmmaker. During Soviet Union, he was the absolute god. He is amazing. His movies are amazing. His movies are still on Russian TV all the time, especially yeah. his film uh, about New Year's Eve and uh, all the funny things happening over there. Garage. Uh, garage <laughs> and also Ronya Sudba, yeah. Ronya Fate, yeah. right? Yeah. And uh, for the English speaking audience, it's just, I mean, it's Bob Zemeckis, Ivan Reitman, I mean, everything, Steven Spielberg, all together. Yeah. That's who he was yeah. for, uh, for us. In incredible sense of humor incredible incredible talent yeah. incredible Amazing. talent yeah. yes yeah. and uh, uh i gave a book to his my book for kids i gave it for his grandchildren and he invited me to one of his films uh tihi omote ah. uh, tihi omote that film it was it, it became my first uh, film and the only russian film that was I one of made. his last ones wasn't it, it? Uh, it was one of the last ones and uh It was with Alexander Abdulov right. and uh, uh, Lyubov Polishchuk and uh, uh, Gennady Khazanov. I mean, great Russian actors, all my heroes. Yeah. Uh, Gennady Khazanov is still uh, alive. And uh, unfortunately, uh, Alexander Abdulov and Lyubov Polishchuk not with us anymore. Great actors. I mean, amazing actors. And uh, I played uh, in a couple of scenes. He, he wrote like a couple of scenes for me and it was funny and everything. And uh, that was the only Russian film I ever I ever made because mm -hmm. by 1998 it was really clear for me that if I want to do a film career I should go to Hollywood and uh, I didn't speak English well what was your thought process why why Hollywood because I mean Arnold, I'll tell you why Arnold, but like I, I just want to know why, yeah why did you go because I felt that if I want to learn how to make movies I have to do it where where the heart and soul of movies are which is hollywood basically here that's uh, that's uh, that's a great plan I, i didn't think about 
how to learn, but uh, <laughs> how to get. So uh, I knew that, uh, for example, when I went to the States first time in 1998, total box office in Russia was $2 million. Mm -hmm. $2 million. Mm -hmm. Total box office of what all movies. Now? About $2 billion. Wow. Yeah. Uh, but at the time, it mm -hmm. was like that. So I knew that uh, there's no place for me over there because I don't want to play Russian gangsters uh, on the background mm -hmm. and uh, once a year and they just don't produce movies right. anymore. That's uh, how it is. Plus, I always wanted to do English language movies. I always wanted to do Hollywood movies in a sense that my films will be released worldwide, not just in one country. Right. So um, I become a student at the UCLA Extension first mm -hmm. and uh, went here uh, to learn English. Mm -hmm. And it was funny because as soon as I arrived uh, in the summer of 1999, of course, before I arrived, I mean, I gave like 100 interviews to Russian media that I'm going to the States and uh, just <laughs> wait for my new movie in a year. Of course, I get back to them with my movie in four years, not in one year, oh, yeah. but... Uh, well, that's actually fast. Uh, it sounds it sounds fast, yeah, that's but, fast. It, but it wasn't. Uh, but my point it is... It didn't feel that way, of course. Yeah, it but, didn't. Yeah. It didn't. Uh, but... Uh, it it was it was it was interesting and sometimes funny because I didn't want to I didn't want to lose any time, mm -hmm. so I started to learn English at the UCLA and I decided that I should go right away to learn acting, so I became a student of Lee Strasberg Theater Institute mm -hmm. in West Hollywood. The problem was um, I didn't speak English much, uh, if I can say or at all. So at UCLA they we have knew that in it. common by the way too. Exactly. Just I, that's how I started uh, studying acting as well. It was kind of weird because my English wasn't there at all. See, <laughs> so uh, in the afternoon I was uh, I was uh, learning English at the UCLA and they knew I don't understand what they're talking about. So they tried to they tried to teach me how to speak. Right. Right. In the evening. Basically, all my acting uh, teachers, they assumed that if I joined the Strasberg Theatre Institute, I probably speak English and probably understand, right? And I didn't. So, <laughs> so, so it was funny. But uh, of course, I mean, month by month, I, I started to understand. And uh, actually, when I joined the class, you have to, uh, first, you have to have kind of like, not an exam, but right. uh, you have to talk to them. And uh, I, uh, I brought all my covers, like from Russian magazines. They actually uh, call it audition. Yeah. It's yeah, a, yeah. But uh, with me, it was little. It was little bit different edition. I mean, uh, it was kind of strange edition because at least Strasbourg, they uh, they ask you to watch mm -hmm. uh, tape mm -hmm. with Lee Strasberg's uh, uh, ideas, and for like thirty minutes, Lee Strasberg just sit there and uh, speak on camera, speaks on camera about uh, his vision and his method, which was basically based on uh, Stanislavski, which was another question they asked me, asked me, Alexander, they asked me, so without really knowing English, you, bodybuilding star from Russia, come here to learn Lee Strasberg in English, which was based on Stanislavski system in Russian. I said, I said, I never really look for easy way. <laughs> That's what I said. That was the first thing. And when they put uh, Lee Strasberg tape, I, I actually fall asleep. <laughs> just, 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 just. But I had all my covers and I, right. I explained to them what I want to yeah. do. And uh, and they accepted me. And uh, like uh, six months later, uh, I started to understand what's going on. And my first film was Undisputed with uh, Wesley Snipes and Wing Rames. I had a little part over there, but Walter Hill basically mm -hmm. uh, saw me and... Uh, um, they put me into the film and uh, introduced me to Roy Scheider, mm -hmm. uh, late Roy Scheider, Roy Scheider from uh, Jaws and mm -hmm. all the jazz. Mm -hmm. So I did another film with Roy Scheider. It was part. Of, it was already bigger part, but still kind of small red serpent. And uh, after that, I figure out that uh, I don't want to play bad Russians here either. And it was uh, it was basically offer after offer which I was getting. And, uh, that's I was, actually incredible. That's, that's it, wa it was incredible, but it, 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 it wasn't what I needed. So, for example, uh, when I went to Battle Dome, mm -hmm. casting Battle Dome, it was kind of like American Gladiators mm -hmm. uh, on UPN 13 channel, like a big show. They wanted me, right? But also they wanted me to play uh, like stupid, big Russian guy. <laughs> Typecasted uh, exactly, you completely. Exactly. Yes. And they had like a huge <laughs> casting process. And they also told me like you have to... You have to feel 
very happy because yeah. all the freaking bodybuilders, I mean, uh, thousands of them yeah. will die to get your part and everything. And uh, as you know, they don't let you to read really what your character is before you really got it. So when I when I uh, when I got it all, I mean, one thing was great because it was like like Columbia Right Star Television and Alexander Nevsky contract, which was great. I mean, yeah. and after that, it was uh, explanation what my character will do and everything. I mean, uh, like with Red Cross and his uh, baseball cap and or whatever. I mean, it, 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 I explained it to them that it's not what I have to do. And the uh, casting director, I mean, uh, was in shock because they spent like three months on uh, casting, right? And they got like that six guys. I was one of them. And uh, probably now he had to do it all over again. Mm -hmm. uh, but I never really played that typical Russian bad guys. And right now I understand that uh, I made the right choice. Because but, I, I mentioned... Was it, was it why you became a producer? Yes. So you can create opportunities for yourself again. Again. Exactly. And, yeah. Uh, I mean, most heartbroken thing was when... Uh, I was introduced to Jack Gilardi, who mm -hmm. was like a big agent at ACM uh, at the time. And he liked me and he introduced me to Van Damme right away and to Sheldon Letich, mm -hmm. who directed the like, best Van Damme films like uh, from mm -hmm. 80s, like uh, uh, Double Impact and Legionnaire. And he wrote Rambo 3 for Stallone. So uh, Sheldon Letich was making a movie with uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme and Leigh Charlton Heston, The Order. Mm -hmm. Ivy Lerner was producing and... Uh, um, uh, they introduced me to Jean-Claude. I gave Jean-Claude that book, of course, right away. That book, which I wrote five years before that, with him on the cover. And we liked each other a lot. But when Jack showed me who I should play, I don't know if you watched the movie, but uh, I mean, it was a great film. But there's like a moment in the film, because Jean-Claude is playing like adventurer who is looking for his father. And mm -hmm. Charlton Heston is playing his father, and Brian Thompson is playing the bad guy. And uh, Jean Claude is traveling all around the world in the States. I think he's I in have. States I, and I feel Israel, like I have. I don't... In Ukraine. And in Ukraine, there's like a big fight, and there's like a big guy who, I mean, it's just for like three or four minutes. It's like a big I fight in the museum yeah. and everything. And they wanted me to play that guy. And uh, I mean, Jean Claude is one of my heroes. And uh, mm -hmm. to be in a movie with him, I mean, it's just, uh, it could be dream come true, especially at the moment when I right. didn't do any movies. Mm -hmm. uh, but as soon as I read that, I mean, I couldn't That's a go huge heartbreak. back. Yeah, I, I get couldn't it. Couldn't go back to my audience in Russia, to millions of people who knew uh, that yeah. I went to Hollywood to play uh, nice roles. Or I couldn't go back to them playing like that stereotypical yeah. idiots, yeah. like yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Russian bad guys. I couldn't do that. Yeah, I understand. So that was that. I mean, they they understood it too, and even Sheldon Letich, by the way, Sheldon told me like uh, it's the right decision, and like seven years later. I hired Sheldon as exec producer on my on the Black Rose. Mm -hmm. uh, Sheldon was exec producer on the Black Rose, uh, which is on Netflix now and uh, was my directorial debut mm -hmm. actually. So uh, to answer that uh, thing, of course you have to you have to believe in yourself, and it doesn't matter if you I mean 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. I mean on every stage. Uh, you will have the choices, I mean, uh, to step on yourself or just to push harder and just create more opportunities for yourself. Sure. It just, it's, it's all up to you. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's amazing, uh, for example, because I mean, me, I'm like a huge guy and you, a uh, very romantic, uh, amazing uh, woman who did same thing, right? And this is a proof that uh, everyone could do it. It just, you have to, you have to push and you have to believe in yourself. Yeah, well, it's, it, that's, that, it, I was just actually talking to my daughter the other day and I said, I don't know if I would have the strength to do that again. You do. Because it, it takes so much, you know, to come here as like this already adult immigrant. And I had two kids with me as single mom, <laughs> you know what I mean? And the nights, the, the, like the years of not sleeping at night because I was so worried, so stressed out, you know, working and, you know, like, but, but what really kept me going is that I had a bigger fear. The fear was the one day when I'm a lot older to say to myself, you know what, maybe I could, maybe I could have, but I never gave myself a chance. So that was a huge fear that drove me for a long time. I mean, 
fear is a completely different subject matter <laughs> that we deal with on a daily basis of but course you, but like yeah you, you have well. to you, you have to well. face thank you yeah. <laughs> thank you which is again which is a proof that mm -hmm. everyone can do that and uh, you're absolutely right that's actually those situation with one damn film got me uh, to think about producing actually not second uh, not first time second time because I was introduced to Arnold Schwarzenegger in 2000 mm -hmm. and I was introduced by Ralph Miller by another mm -hmm. idol of mine mm -hmm. and the reason for that meeting was I know Michael Gorbachev very well mm -hmm. uh, our ex-president and before my trip to the United States Mr. Gorbachev signed a book for Arnold Ah. Yeah, so I, I was prepared. So that was the reason for my meeting with yeah. Arnold. And Arnold still had that book at his uh, office, at, like a small museum in his office. So my English was very limited. But uh, Ralph, actually Ralph was uh, um, pushing me and like, ask, ask Arnold something. And ask him, ask him, what should I do here if uh, I want to move forward, if, if I want to have a chance for a career? Because again, I was uh, like I was 28 years old at the time, but I was smart enough to understand that what Arnold did, I mean, uh, it happens once in a blue moon. You cannot yeah, it's repeat. Incredible. You cannot yeah. repeat what you did or I did or he did. I mean, it has to be your own way. Yeah. But uh, he's uh, there are some incredible, amaz yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. He's amazing and everything. So I ask for an advice, and he told me, he told me, if you really want to try, you have to create a situation. So you uh, will depend only on yourself, not on the studios, but on yourself. You have to think about keeping your audience in Russia. You have mm -hmm. to think about uh, starting to produce yourself and be more active yourself and figure out how to Hollywood work. And uh, again, it was 2000. And uh, uh, so I kept, uh, I kept pushing for Russia. I was living here and uh, learning English and acting, whatever, but I was still taping my TV shows for Channel One. They had like, uh, at the moment, they had like just one TV show for young people, the Shesnatsity Starsha. Like one TV show which was uh, uh, every week yeah. on uh, Channel One Russia. And I was taping some same thing, some exercises, yeah. uh, whatever, and sending there and they just put it on TV so the audience uh, uh, remember me. Also, I started to write. I started mm -hmm. to write for biggest Russian newspapers like Arguments and Facts mm -hmm. uh, because I knew everyone. They, they I wrote write for them too. See, <laughs> so they, they wrote about me so In many Kazakhstan. times. I, yeah. Exactly. So I did it for them. Uh, and uh, I became a member of the Hollywood Foreign Press. Mm -hmm. I was uh, um, recommended to the organization by Mafuz Dos, who was a president at the time. Mm -hmm. And actually, he's a big fan of bodybuilding himself. Uh, and by the time I joined the Hollywood Foreign Press, I, I already... I mean, had a lot of articles published mm -hmm. in Russia and everything. It was actually, it was great, kind of like a movie school for me because mm -hmm. Hollywood Foreign Press and the Golden Globes, I mean, they have like huge history on their own. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's incredible access to the talent and uh, to uh, the opportunity to talk to the talent and get all that, uh, of course, uh, all that advices and everything. But talking about Arnold, actually, when... Arnold watched Maximum Impact. I even put it on Instagram, on my Instagram. Before the screening, it's actually Arnold and his helicopter. One second, let's, right let's take here. a second. Yeah. He's right he, here. He's, Arnold he's... just landing. <laughs> Eagle has landed. Yeah. It's nice, like in the movie. So, before the screening, and I have it on video, I reminded him. I reminded him the story because it was him, it was Ralph, it was Andrzej Bartkovic over there. Uh, and I told him, I told him that basically I used all his advices and this is my eighth movie and it just... Uh, you, yeah. You're like, you're actually reading my mind because I was going to say how many movies, but like eighth movie... As a, as a producer? Right, eight. that's, 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 that's where like, because you know the, um, a, a lot of um, our audience are actually uh, um, uh, filmmakers, right? or people who are involved in whatever the aspects of 
making movies. And um, what I wanted to talk about, the, the very first movie you produced, how you produced it, where did you get the money? Because that is like the hot red question. How do you finance, me, everybody, I'm, I'm not saying you particular, but like each one of us have had that first movie, how we financed it. And like, I don't care where you live, whether that's in Russia, Kazakhstan, China, or in the United States, somewhere outside of Los Angeles, it, it is it's a, it is a, a huge challenge for people to overcome. And, you know, particularly now where like these big corporations are like merging and really like uh, eating out all the market for the for, you know, the the theater markets are being basically swallowed by them. So, my first film called Moscow hit, mm -hmm. and uh, I wrote the script myself mm -hmm. with my American friend Robert Madrid. Mm -hmm. It was about a Russian cop mm -hmm. who uh, decided to to help Americans in Moscow, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the idea was mine, but also it was uh, based loosely on uh, Red Heat, great Walter Hill film mm -hmm. with Arnold Schwarzenegger and James Belushi. And actually it was uh, Walter Hill, uh, who was in 2002 when we finished Undisputed, he told me that I should do something like that. Uh -huh. uh, because it was him actually who shot Arnold playing Russian. Right. Like in the middle of another Cold War, it was 1987, <laughs> then they shot Red Heat, right? Yeah. And that's what he told me because uh, he also was the one we shot in Vegas, Undisputed, first Undisputed. Mm -hmm. uh, I will learn and made a franchise of straight mm -hmm. to video uh, out of it. But first Undisputed, West is Night, it was a theatrical film mm -hmm. by Miramax. And we shot in Las Vegas, and uh, Walter Hill actually uh, spent a lot of time. I, I spent two weeks over there, and uh, I spoke to him a lot because he's also a bodybuilding fan, and uh, uh, he told me that for big guys, it's different time now. And actually, in 80s and 90s, for martial artists, for bodybuilders, even, we're not talking about Sly or Arnold, for, uh, for smaller budget movies, there was still a lot of possibilities because of the VHS, DVD, TV, and even theatrical, whatever. Mm -hmm. It's all changed by the yeah. beginning of the thousands. It's all changed. It changed now and completely. Now, I mean... It's and, like and whole, they, and they totally th different story. Exactly. And they yeah. thought it, it was hard then. No. Mm. Now, it's completely different and much harder <laughs> because it's, uh, DVD is dead completely. Yeah. And uh, I mean, Blu-rays... Not here. In the States, it's still business. But all around the world, it's not. But that, that's a different story. At the time... He told me also that uh, I have to think more about creating an opportunity for myself because it's exactly what Stallone is doing. Mm -hmm. And later it was Stallone who created Expendables. It was him. I will learn just financed it, you know. So he told me to be more creative. Uh, he told me again not to wait for anyone to create it for me because it's a different freaking time. Yeah. And uh, Moscow hit when I when I wrote it. Again, it was 2003, and as I told you, in 1999, when I moved to LA, uh, total box office in Russia was $2 million. By 2003, it was already like $45 million. Oh, wow. And it was still peanuts for the studios, but I saw what's going on, because we have a great, I'm, I'm sure in Kazakhstan too, we have a great tradition to go to theaters. It's just in the 90s, they closed the theaters, they opened up like, I mean, car dealerships or whatever, furniture stores. Well, yeah, because economy suffered. So yes. they had to put the bread on the table first. And also yeah. government stopped yeah. to support movie industry because mm -hmm. Soviet government supported it. Yeah. And Russian government just didn't have money to support it. That's right. why it all yeah. collapsed. Yeah. But because of the uh, Putin's government and uh, new economy, they changed the situation. And it started to change. Not as much as it is now, but again, I saw what's going on. And I... I realized that uh, basically if I go back to my audience now, all these people who watched me on TV in the 90s, they could go to the movie theaters. There's no guarantee, of course, uh, but I thought they could have. And uh, by the middle of 2003, uh, I had a script. I also secured the cast because Michael York loved the script. Mm -hmm. And Michael York at the time, I mean, he was I mean, uh, much bigger. He just got his star on Hollywood Walk of Fame. He was in Austin Powers movies. I mean, mm -hmm. he's an amazing actor from all the Zifferelli movies mm -hmm. and Bob mm -hmm. Fosse movies. 
and uh, also had Adrian Paul, mm -hmm. who at the time was just coming off the Highlander TV show and movies, and also had Joanna Pakula and some other, and it was 2003, it was 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, so we found a great director, Jeff Celentano, who just Wait, did... how did you finance it? Who financed it? You know, the most important uh, rule of filmmaking, first of all, uh, you personally, you cannot finance anything, of and course. you shouldn't. Okay. You always have to have like a, an interesting structure, project structure. You always have to get your investors get interested. So by 2003, I have enough connections here in the States, but I still have my name over there. And of course, for my oh, partners oh, over there, I understand. now it was very it was very easy to explain mm -hmm. that if Alexander Nevsky and Hollywood stars gotcha. will make a film, yeah, yeah, yeah. Karo, which was the biggest, like it was Warner Brothers Russia, they said, we will, we will release the film. So it was very easy to find financing over there mm -hmm. first. Plus, uh, <laughs> as I said, you shouldn't put your money into the film, but Moscow Heat was the only film. Of course, I did put some, some of my money first because I wanted to make sure that all the rights of the film, I mean, uh, they're also in our hands. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's why I was so involved in a script and in a casting and uh, when I chose the director. And we shot the film in the summer of 2003. In 2004, uh, Karovich is again, it's Warren Brothers Russia. They released it in Russia. They got like, 1.3 million dollars which was a big number uh, at the time uh, after that was sold it right away to channel one russia and which was important we shot it in english uh -huh. they wanted us to shoot it in russian i said no we will shoot it in english and we will dub it completely into russia so uh budget of the film was not big it was less than two million dollars but we got it all back just from uh, russia of course and you... ussr and because it was in english everything else was icing on a cake so then, um, so for people who who really want to understand how to produce their own movies, but they might not be you, meaning they don't they don't have the name, they don't have the connections and things like that. But they 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 really have the passion for it, you know. How they have would, to find a way. Yeah, how you cannot explain it uh, to someone from Kazakhstan or from France or from uh, Poland. I mean, how can you explain that? You can teach but how to uh, how to get a good writer, how to do proper casting, how to understand international sales, right. how to understand everything else. You can teach that, but if you have a passion, you have to find a way. So yeah, what I really liked about what you were just saying about your story was the first movie where I can uh, relate to you on that is like, well, I have never really written scripts myself. I just don't have a knack for it and I don't have a patience, <laughs> but I've written ideas for movies. I have written synopsis, no, not synopsis, like treatments and so on and so forth, and then would hire the writer. So what I really liked is that, first of all, you've saved money because meaning like at the beginning, right? So you've written your own script. You came up with a great idea, great structures, the, um, something that might potentially interest the distributors. It's not like I saved the money. It's just it was more I knew what I want to create. I had to create a starting vehicle for myself and uh, again, we spent less than $2 million on the film, but because of the Russian theatrical release and USSR and uh, Channel One Russia TV premiere and DVD at the time in Russia and USSR, ex-USSR, whatever, we got all that money back just right. from one territory. Right. But because it was in English with Hollywood cast and crew, yeah. later that was we sold yeah. it to the yeah. almost 40 countries, mostly straight to DVD, TV, Whatever, some some countries bought it to, for the theatrical mm -hmm. release, whatever. And after that, we made a deal with Universal, who released it here in limited theaters, but also on DVD, and was sold it to Cinemax and Showtime and everything else. So when I, uh, when I started to talk about my second film, Treasure Raiders... Of course, was, they were happy. I mean, it was very yeah. easy to explain everyone how you will make right. the money, because me, and even now, even now, go hard. I mean, if you produce the film with Dolph Lundgren or Jean-Claude Van Damme mm -hmm. and try to sell it to Russia, I mean, if you're lucky, you'll have $20,000 for all the rights. Right. That's what you will get, or maybe twenty-five. With my films, I mean, my directorial debut, Black Rose, 
which I did. We got million dollars again only from theaters, from limited release, kind of over there. You know, before I sold it to TV and uh, over there, before I started to sell it to Netflix and, and worldwide. I mean, you have to have know-how. You have to have something which will separate you from like thousands or millions of others. Very important. Or also, of course, uh, so many people dream about being in movies. But the funny thing is, I mean, funny thing is, it's kind of like bodybuilding because there's so many people with amazing bodies, especially now with Instagram. And I mean, so many people, they don't do anything else. They just train. Unfortunately, most of them use uh, illegal drugs. I mean, steroids, whatever they eat, they get some tan, whatever. They put pictures on uh, uh, Instagram. And after that, they're curious why no one discovered them why no one is inviting them to the tv or to movies or giving them contracts because it's not enough to have a perfect body it's not enough to have a perfect body and an acting talent it's not enough to have a perfect body acting talent and producers chops it's not enough to have that 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 and i mean you have to have it all if you if you want to move forward and most important thing as i said from the beginning you have to have a dream you have to believe in yourself and you have to understand why you're doing it and how you will do it on a long run. Because I mean, especially now, with all the technology, anyone can make a film. I mean, you can shoot it on a camera, on photo camera, on your phone. I mean, you, you can do, you can sell your house. You can, I mean, everyone can do it once, but it's not about that. It's about making business out of that one after another, get to the people, make your name bigger. I mean, it's, there's just so many things. I hope you, because you have that uh, great uh, film academy, right? I hope uh, in your film academy you trying to explain that to your students. That's exactly why. This is why I'm exactly. asking, and I'm just having like like you know goosebumps because like what you're saying just now, very passionately, resonates with me very strongly, and I really hope that the audience will get that point because yeah, it's it's not about one or two things; it's about everything. Yes. And most importantly, why? What's your why? That's exactly the same as it was in 1986 when I figure out what I want to do. I know what I want to do. I want to live my dream. And that's exactly what I'm doing, as, as I told you. I eat in the morning what I want to eat. I train how I want to train. I live where I want to live, you know, because... And it's funny, I read it in one of the books, and I asked Arnold, and it's true, he, when, when he just got here, I mean, every day, because he didn't have much money, I mean, he had to work very hard and everything, but he was opening the window every every morning, and it was the sun, and he was saying to himself, like, Arnold, you lucky dog, because he's from Austria, right? I mean, he's from all that, uh, and I'm from Moscow, so that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm, I'm looking at the sun every day. I mean, it's just, it's freaking California. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's all dream, and that's my why, because that's what I decided to do. And of course, I mean... Uh, from what I'm saying, I'm sure you got it. I mean, of course, I had a lot of difficulties. Of course, I you still did. have. I mean, that movie, that movie, Maximum Impact, which I mean, I did everything right on that film. Uh, I had a big studio director, Andrzej Bartkowiak. He directed Doom with Dwayne Johnson, Romeo Must Die with Jet Li, Cradle to the Grave with Jet Li. Wow. I mean, he made Jet Li a star in the United States. Uh, Ross Laman, uh, who wrote the script for that one, based on my idea, I did exactly what you just said. It was my idea, but I hired Ross Laman, who created Rush Hour. Mm -hmm. He wrote the original Rush Hour for Jackie Chan and Chris Tucker. Mm -hmm. it, that one was supposed to be my first big uh, like action comedy break with theatrical potential. And I had like uh, not just our mutual friend Doc, Mark Dacascus, I had also Billy Baldwin and Danny Trejo and Kelly Hu and, and 20 other actors. I mean... Uh, that film became like the hardest film in my career because, for example, my studio director, he didn't know how to produce independent movies. So he oh, spent yeah. all the, he spent all the freaking money we had like in the first two weeks of the shooting. So our budget uh, suddenly uh, became twice bigger. I made that bigger. mistake once, yeah. See, and uh, that's, that's another story. And that's just, uh, and Tom Arnold, by the way, was in that film. And Tom Arnold is so funny. And Eric Roberts was in that film. And Eric is unbelievable, uh, unbelievable guy. Actually, Eric... Uh, supported me a lot when the uh, film was released over here. And he went with me on uh, KTLA and on KLS radio. I just told you before the uh, our show, and it was funny because Eric knows everyone. Mm -hmm. And Steve Jones, who was a 
uh, one of the original Sex Pistols. He invited us, me and Eric, to his show on KLS. And that's when they complimented my voice because you see I have that uh, mic so far from me. You have it right there and I have it so far because of my voice. And that's exactly what they did on the radio on KLS. They said, you know, Alexander, just go far because you have such a strong voice. So uh, I just hope that uh, your students and your audience, uh, they will understand what I'm saying. And not just because of my broken English, but also... No, you also, have a great... <laughs> no, thank, it's, 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 thank you. It's, you know, thank it's, you it's like you, we, we, we speak with an accent, but we are pretty fluent. We sp- yeah, we're pretty fluent. Yeah. It's just uh, yeah. uh, I sent you the link to my CBS interview. It was my debut on CBS, on CBS Morning Show, uh, uh, like uh, last month. So it's, it, it was right on show when I when I came there. So I said, Alexander, so how are you doing? I said, first of all, I got lost on your lot. Second of all, I, I remember that. Exactly. <laughs> second of all, and this is this is true. When I when I found them, finally there was a guard. He said, Oh, Alexander, what will you talk about? I said, I will talk about my film. He said, Oh, you will talk about NFL. I said, not, <laughs> not, not not NFL, my film. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, the yeah. funny thing is, I mean, it doesn't matter if you talk yeah. with an accent. Everyone. Everyone has an accent in that city. You just have to push for your dream every day, with no exceptions. You should live your dream, but also you should push for your dream. Wow, what a inspiring story. So if a little skinny kid um, uh, from Russia, at the time that Soviet Union was falling apart, economy was falling apart, could make himself into a star and successful filmmaker so could you wherever you are and i promise one thing for sure that in every which uh, episode we will absolutely give you either a little bit of inspiration or a little bit of knowledge or both and with that thank you <laughs>